So will, will we begin? Uh, yes, Gomash, we only have six devotees now. Uh -huh. Would you like to start or? Yeah, I'll just say some prayers. Okay, sure. sure. Let, let them come. Yes. Mm -hmm. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Pandiham Shri Garo Shri Yatapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Shyam Shri Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha He Krishna Karna Sindhu Dhinna Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Goranke Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Precharine Nirvisesha Shunyavari Paschatya Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we welcome everyone to the class this evening. I'm going to speak from the first chapter of the Krishna book, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The first chapter is entitled The Advent of Lord Krishna. So I'll just go over the content of the first chapter in my own words. So actually this Krishna book is non-different from the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam and each chapter relates exactly to the, the chapter in the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam. So the first chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam it's also the first chapter of the tenth canto is also the advent of Lord Krishna. So the chapter begins with description of the world situation, how Mother Bhumi is in great anxiety because of the burden on the planet of all the demoniac kings. Uh, 
It's interesting to note that the, the deity of the earth planet is Mother Bhumi. And Mother Bhumi takes the form of a cow, which tells us the importance of cows on this planet. We think this planet belongs to the humans, but actually this planet is more the property of the cows than the humans. The cows need us, of course. They're a domestic creature. They're meant to be cared for, and they need us to look after them. We also need the cows. The cows are very important for the human civilization. So Mother Bhumi, in the form of the cow, went to approach Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma is the original person in the universe. And when there's any problem in the universe, the demigods, they will go to him for help. They don't go, they don't go directly to Lord Vishnu. Of course, Lord Vishnu is really responsible for the maintenance of the universe, but they don't go directly to Vishnu. First they approach Lord Brahma, and then when Lord Brahma, if he's not able to do anything, then he will approach Lord Vishnu. <laughs> So, Lord Brahma goes to the shore. Within this universe, there's one planet where Lord Vishnu resides, which is called Sweta Dweep. And Lord Vishnu, he goes to the shore of the milk ocean, which is there on Sweta Dweep and he meditates on Lord Vishnu. And at that time all the demigods, they also accompanied Lord Brahma and Bhumi, they are also there, and they were all chanting the Purusha Shukta. Purusha Shukta. The Purusha Shukta. Yeah, Purusha Shukta is a prayer which Brahmanas usually chant when they worship the Shalagram Shila. Yeah. So devotees are supposed to learn that Purusha Shukta, especially if you're doing puja work, you want to recite that almost daily, they will recite Purusha Shukta. I remember a, a, a year or two ago when I was in the Middle East, I visited the Middle East, and in the Middle East there, they were, te they were teaching all the men, and the young men, to recite Purusha Shukta, 
And at that time they were also teaching the young ladies to recite the Gopi Gita. Gopi Gita. The Gopi Gita is in the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter number 31 of the 10th canto is the Gopi Gita. It's a song by the gopis when they're in separation from Krishna. Krishna had disappeared from them and they're looking everywhere for Krishna. Yeah, if you go if you go to Vrindavan during the month of Kartik, you'll find there's always some devotees there reciting Gopi Gita every evening. But there are many devotees, they will recite it every day. Men and women can recite. So we want to introduce these things in ISKCON gradually be, be, become more cultural by learning these different prayers. So the demigods were reciting Purusha Shukta and Lord Vishnu transmitted a message into the heart of Lord Brahma. And he told Lord Brahma that I'm going to come there, I'm going to come on the earth, I'll take birth on the earth planet and I will appear in the Yadu dynasty as the son of Vasudev. เอ่อส่วนมนต์อ้อนวอนภวิสนุนะคะหลังจากนั้นเนี่ยภวิสนุนเนี่ยก็จะส่งคําตอบไปให้ในใจของพระพงศ์นะคะผ่านทางใจของ
ลยเรียกอีกทีหนึ่งว่าด่างนะคะด่างพระวสนาที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์สนาที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์หมายความว่าสนาที่ที่มีพระผู้เป็นเจ้าเนี่ยทรงอาศัยอยู่ตลอด Yeah we know Mathura today as the birthplace of Lord Krishna and the temple was there where Lord Krishna appeared ปัจจุบันที่มัทุรานะคะจะเป็นที่รู้จักกันว่าเป็นสถานที่ประสูตรของพระกิสนาหาก็จะมีพระปฏิมาของพระกิสนาอยู่ But actually Lord Krishna resides there eternally in his spiritual form แต่ว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงอาศัยอยู่ที่นั่นอย่างถาวรนะคะในรูปลักษณ์ทิพของพระองค์ Mathura is not only the city Mathura, but there's a whole district of Mathura, which includes also Vrindavan. Mathura, นะคะไม่ใช่เป็นแค่เมืองเมืองหนึ่งนะแต่ว่าเป็นทั้ง district ก็คือเป็นทั้งเขตเลยนะเป็นเขตหนึ่งซึ่งในเขตนี้เนี่ยจะมี Vrindavan เนี่ยอยู่ด้วย Vrindavan ก็เป็นเขต Mathura, เขตแขวงเป็นทั้งเขตทั้ง So there is a difference between a, a tirtha and a dam. Tirtha is a place where different pastimes take place. Tirtha is associated with different great devotees, like. Acharyas, different acharyas, they may visit the different tirthas. In South, in, in South India, in South India, there's 108 tirthas connected with Ramanuja Acharya. But the dam is where the Lord resides eternally. So Navadvip Dam, Dwarka Dam, Puri Dam, and also Mathura Dam. ก็จะมีดามอย่างที่มาแรกกล่าวมานะคะนาวดีดามมาทุรักถามแล้วก็ปุริดามดวาริกาดาม They're all connected with the Lord's pastimes ทั้งหมดนี้นะก็เชื่อมสัมพันธ์กับลีลาขององค์พระควาน So the king of Mathura uh, The kings of Mathura, the, king, the different kings of the Yadu dynasty, they are based there in Mathura. Mm -hmm. uh, even long before that, there was a demon living there in that area of Mathura. And the, the the brahmanas came to Lord Ramachandra in the time of Lord Ramachandra in the Dwapara in the in the Treta Yuga. They came there to Lord Ramachandra and they asked him to help, to for this demon who was disturbing all the brahmanical activities. <laughs> ที่นั่นนะคะที่เมืองมัทุราเนี่ยแม้ตอนที่ตอนตั้งแต่สมัยพระรามแล้วนะคะเออเตรตยุกะตอนสมัยนั้นนะก็จะมีมารมาคอยรบกวนพวกนักพรามพวกพรามนะคะเวลาพวกเขาปฏิบัติพิธีศักดิ์สิทธิ์ต่างๆเนี่ยก็จะมีมารมาคอยรบกวนก็มีคนไปขอความช่วยเหลือจากพระรามให้ช่วยมาจัดการมาร So at that time Lord Ramachandra sent one of his brothers there to fight that demon And and he went. The brother went there and fought and killed the demon. And at that time, he established Mathura as the capital city. This was Shatrugna actually. Shatrugna was sent there by Lord Ramachandra. And he fought with the demon, 
and he killed that demon and then he established Mathura as the capital city there. So you, you can you can see the history of the history of Mathura so long millions of years. So, so we're talking now about five thousand years ago, just before the Kali Yuga began. So at that time, we hear how Vasudev had just married the daughter of Maharaj Devaka. The daughter was called Devaki. So Vasudev was married to Devaki. Now Vasudev was a Kshatriya and the Kshatriyas, they're accustomed to have many wives and Vasudev also, he had accepted several wives. But the Srimad Bhagavatam in this chapter is describing how Vasudev had just married Devaki and they had a very nice wedding and after the marriage Maharaj Devaka he gave a very big dowry to Devaki to Devaki for her wedding present. Sometimes we think you know that long ago the earth was so poor that there was you know there was no no, no no opulence there everybody was very poor they were all just living in caves but we learn from the Srimad Bhagavatam and from the Vedas how the world was very opulent <laughs> So at the time of her marriage, her whose girl is this? <laughs> My uh, brother. Uh, daughter oh, okay. So uh, at that time the, the dowry was made up of there were elephants and chariots and horses and there were there was even he even gave a dowry of 200 young girls, young women to go with his daughter as friends <laughs> for her. <laughs> Uh -huh. So the the father her father was thinking that my daughter's getting married and she's going to live with her husband. I don't want her to be lonely. She should have some friends with her. So he arranged that 200 other young women would also go with her to be her friends while she is married to this man. So 
And so they cared. They, they were very much, we, we see how much care was taken for the arrangement of the marriage of the girl to make sure the marriage will be happy and successful. And so, uh, Devaki also had her brother who was known by the name Kamsa and he was driving their chariot. On the chariot was Vasudev and Devaki, the husband and wife, just married, and the brother, Kamsa, Devaki's own brother, Kamsa, was driving the chariot for them because he was concerned for, he thought, my sister's married, I should take her to her husband's home. <laughs> So while Kamsa was driving the chariot, at that point, suddenly from the sky, there was a, a voice announced that Kamsa, you're such a foolish person. You don't know that the eighth child of your sister is going to kill you. So, it happened that when Kamsa heard this voice, then immediately he grabbed his sister Devaki by the hair and he was ready to cut off her head. Now her husband, the new husband, Vasudev, he is not a Maharati. He was not a great fighter. So he didn't try to fight back, but instead he tried to speak to Kamsa and tried to pacify him. So, Kamsa, uh, Vasudev began to give many different philosophical explanations to establish in Kamsa's mind the temporary nature of the material body. Yeah. Of course, the body is the thing we are most attached to. But we should understand this body it's temporary, it cannot live forever.
And when, and, and when Kamsa heard that his own life was in danger from the eighth child of this sister, then he was ready to kill her. And Vasudev was trying to give, he gave very nice philosophical arguments explaining about how the soul is eternal and this body is just temporary, it's just some, it's not something which we should be so much attached to. And so even though Vasudev spoke, Vasudev was an expert politician and statesman. He was not a fighter. He was not a military, you know, a person who would fight with weapons, but he was very expert in using words and language. So even though he spoke, even though he spoke very nicely and in great detail about the eternal nature of the soul, Kamsa could not be pacified. But then Vasudev told Kamsa, he said, he said, anyway, he said, we've not had any children yet, we just got married. But he said, I promise you that whenever my wife delivers a child, I will give the child to you. Of course, today, you know, and today when people get married, nobody would think about having eight children. But in those days, it was, you know, quite common people that would have many children. People like children. You have a nice married life. Naturally, if, if you don't have any children, it's not very satisfying. But when there are children there, then the marriage is very nice. And the more children, then the more you can enjoy. I was watching from Desire Tree, there was one video and they were interviewing a young, a, a devotee lady and she was telling, she had five children and she was telling, she got married when she was 18 and she, she's had five children so they asked her, they said, uh, do you get much time to read? แล้วก็มีเอ่อล่าสุดนะคะคุณมาราได้เห็นในอิสกอนดีไซร์ทรีนะคะก็มีมาตรีคนนึงเค้ามาแชร์ประสบการณ์ให้ฟังนะคะก
she said, oh, I don't know when, she, she said, I don't know when I last looked at a book. And she said, I haven't been, I haven't been to a class for years because I have five children. So one after another, I always have to look after the children and they start disturbing in the class. So whenever it's the class, I have to go outside, take the children outside. <laughs> so she said, I never, never get to go to class. So this is one of the austerities of having children that you have to make some sacrifices here and there. But we know Bhaktivinoda Thakur also had several, many children. Prabhupada's wife had five children. I think Bhaktivinoda Thakur, his wife, had more than ten children. I think eleven children. Eleven, yes. Children means more children means more devotees. We, of course, you have children to make them devotees. You bring children into the world to prepare them for going back to Godhead. And so you have children to, that they can become nice devotees and preach Krishna consciousness. So Bhaktivinoda... So Bhaktivinoda Thakur trained his children and we know Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati was a very great devotee and he did a lot of preaching. He became the spiritual master of Srila Prabhupada. So Vasudev promised to Kamsa that when my, if my wife delivers a child, then I promise you, I will bring the children, to, you can have the children, you can do what you, whatever you want with them. So when Kamsa heard this, then he accepted this. He was happy with, to hear this. It's an interesting point to understand. It's important to understand this point. That sometimes when we talk philosophy to people, it doesn't impress them very much. But if you can, if you have a very good character, if you are very honest, just like Vasudev, he was a very noble character. And Kamsa trusted his honesty, so Kamsa accepted this uh, plea of Vasudev to spare the life of his wife on the basis of his honesty. <laughs> ตรงนี้เนี่ยเราก็สามารถ 
ื่อใจเราหรือเชื่อเราเพราะเนื่องจากเขาเนี่ยเห็นความจริงจังของเราหรือจริงใจความเออซื่อสัตย์ของเรานะคะทําให้คนรอบข้างเราเนี่ยจะไว้ใจเราเหมือนกับในกรณีนี้นะคะที่คําสั่งเนี่ยไว้ใจวัสุเดชเพราะวัสุเดชเป็นคนที่มีความซื่อสัตย์สุจริต So we may speak a lot of philosophy, but if we're not of good character, then the philosophy will not have much meaning. So the the Srila Prabhupada would often say the purpose of the Krishna consciousness movement is to develop people of the highest character. It's not enough just to know philosophy. We have to also have the good character. So, of course, we may think this is amazing that. Then you know, Vasudev. How could he say like that? That he would give up his child to Kamsa, but Kamsa had to say like this in order in order to save the life of his wife, Devaki. So Vasudev, as a last resort, he had this. He, he thought, "Let me just try to save the life of Devaki for the at the present moment. And later on, we will think about the children." So it happened after the marriage. Then Devaki, she gave birth to a child, and it was a boy. And when the child was born, Vasudev kept his word. And he brought the child to Kamsa. So, of course, it was very painful for Vasudev to give the child away, first child and a boy, but. He wants. He he has to do it. He wants to keep his word. So when Kamsa, when Vasudev brought the son and gave it to Kamsa, then Kamsa was so impressed that he became a little compassionate, and he told Vasudev, he said, well, "It's all right. I'm not in danger from this child. You can keep this child. It's the eighth child who I'm worried about." <laughs> Uh, 
ซึ่งเขาว่าไม่มีอันตรายอะไรกับฉันบุตรคนที่แปดสังหารที่จะเป็นคนที่มาสังหารฉันเธอเอาลูกเธอไป But at that time, Narada Muni came there to Kamsa, and he told Kamsa, he told Kamsa that he should be more careful. He told him that uh, the different demigods are all coming, and they're taking birth here. <laughs> คำสาเธอจะต้องระวังตัวมากกว่านี้นะเธอจะชะล่าใจแบบนี้ไม่ได้ and he said that because Narada Muni he wants to he wants to make arrangements for Lord Krishna coming so he he's anxious for Krishna to come he wants to speed up the situation he wants Lord Krishna to come as soon as possible เพราะฉะนั้นนารักุนีนะคะทำไมถึงทำแบบนั้นลงไปก็เพราะว่านารักุนีเนี่ยอยากจะให้คริชนาเนี่ยทรงรีบมาเร็วๆนะคะถ้าเกิดว่าคำสาเนี่ยไม่ค่อยไร้กาบแล้วเนี่ยเดี๋ยวคริชนาจะไม่ลงมาหรือว่าจะช้าไปกว่านี้อันนี้ก็เพื่อเป็นการเร่งให้คริชนาทรงอวตารลงมาเร็วๆ so kamsa is always in association with the demons and the demons are always the enemies of the demigods So when he heard the demigods are taking birth in the different families of the Yadu dynasty, then he became very worried. So then he arrested Vasudev and Devaki, and he brought them and put them in prison. And he took their children. When Devaki gave birth, one after another, one year after another, Devaki was giving birth to male children. And Kamsa would take the child and kill it. So, of course, Kamsa was really worried about the eighth child, but. He decided all the children were dangerous, so he killed them all. We we see the demons, people who are very demonic, they can do any kind of terrible thing, just to increase their own power. Or to, in, uh, to facilitate their own material sense gratification, they'll do any kind of terrible thing. So Narada Muni also told Kamsa about his previous birth. He said, "You know, previously, you were also killed by Vishnu. You were you were a demon of the name Kalanemi, and Vishnu had killed you." So Kamsa knew that this eighth child, that Krishna was going to take birth in that family of the Yadu dynasty, so he was very afraid. Because he knew the last life he'd been killed, so he thought he kill me in the last life he could kill me again. 
้วเขาสามารถสังหารฉันได้ชาตินี้เขาก็ต้องสังหารฉันได้แน่เลย So Kamsa put his own father in the prison as well as Vasudev and Devaki. Kamsa, นะคะไม่เพียงแต่ให้ Vasudev กับ Devaki ติดเอาไปจำคุกไว้เท่านั้นแม้แต่พ่อของเขาเองนะคะเขาก็เอาพ่อของเขาเนี่ยเข้าไปในคุกด้วย And he he made himself the head of all the different kings. He gave himself a big powerful position. And in this way, he's he's thinking nobody can kill me now. I'm too, I'm very powerful. Nobody can interfere. Nobody can harm me. And so this is how the first chapter goes. This is the, the what what's in the, the basic points of the first chapter. Are there any questions? Yes, Hari Krishna. I have a question. Uh, that uh, it's a very painful situation for Devaki to lose uh, each child. So, the suffering of Vasudeva and Devaki, it is not because of karma, right? That means, uh, why are they suffering like this, in spite of being uh, the uh, parents of uh, Lord Krishna? <laughs> Well, y e a h translate, Archan. Uh, Mataji got ham wa. Uh, in the case of Vasudev and Devaki, is it not? It is a situation that is like a trauma to the heart, is it not? That must be like a child who is suffering like this. Is it not? Why do they have to see what is wrong with them? Why do they have to see what is wrong with them? This comes from the karma of their past, or is it not? It is a karma that is not good for them. Well, one 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 way in which we could look at it is that in order to enjoy, sometimes you have to first of all suffer. You want to enjoy. Sometimes you have to undergo some austerity. You have to be willing to do some purification in order to get some pleasure. We remember Vasudev and Devaki in their previous life. They were Prishni and Sutapa, and as Prishni and Sutapa, they had undergone great austerity for a long time, just eating dry leaves from the tree in order to get the Lord as their child. ทั้งสองคนนี้เนี่ยชื่อว่าพริสทีแล้วก็สุตาปะสองคนนี้เนี่ยได้ปฏิบัติสมถะโดยกะยันหนักนะคะแค่เขาเนี่ยกินใบไม้แห้งนะคะเป็นเวลายาวนานเลยทำสมถะเพื่อที่จะอยากได้องค์พระควานมาเป็นมุด And of course they wanted to have the Lord as their child for three births แล้วเพราะว่าผลที่เขาอยากได้ก็คืออยากจะได้องค์พระควานเนี่ยมาเป็นมุดของตน And so the the Lord came first as Prishni Garba, as from Prishni and Sutapa, the Lord came as Prishni Garba. That was the first birth of the Lord. 
คือพระองค์ทรงอาแล้วก็ชื่อว่าปริชนิคาร์ปานะคะมาเป็นบุตรของปริชนิกับสุดาบันในชาติที่หนึ่ง And then the second birth, the Lord came as Lord Vamana, the child of Kashyapa and Aditi. Now, for the third birth, the Lord is coming as the eighth child of Vasudev and Devaki. Now, just like sometimes a woman wants to have a child, sometimes she may have before she gives birth, she may have miscarriage a few times before she is actually able to be successful and give birth. So, but for Vasudev and Devaki, they had to hand over their child to Kamsa, and Kamsa, because of his demonic nature, he killed each of these children. Certainly, it must have been very painful for them to to be parents and to go through the misery of seeing your child taken away and cruelly killed. Just like the Pandavas, also before they became rulers, before they were able to get the rule the world, Maharaj Yudhisthira became the emperor of the world. They had to go in exile. They had to live in exile for so many years, and they had to go through so many difficulties. The Pandavas. The Pandavas. Pandavas. So they had to suffer a lot. The, their house was set on fire. The Shellac house was set on fire. Bhima was given poison, and then uh, the, then the wife of the Pandavas, Draupadi, was taken from them and insulted. So they suffered so much. <laughs> But ultimately, they came out successful. They conquered at the Battle of Kurukshetra, and they won, and they ruled the planet. So we cannot expect simply because one is a devotee that there won't be any suffering. And we see, we see the example Vasudev and Devaki, how much they suffered. And Narada Muni, he's encouraging Kamsa. He's telling Kamsa, you know, don't, don't, don't let these children live. Better you kill them. Narada Muni, 
เด็กมีไปแบบนี้นะเดี๋ยวสุดท้ายเขาจะวนกลับมาฆ่าเธอโดยไม่รู้ตัวนะก็ไปเตือนคำสาแบบนี้ทำให้คำสายยิ่ง Because, because Narada Muni knows these sons of Devaki, the first sons of Devaki, they are actually demigods who have been cursed. And when, once they are killed, then they can go back to the heavenly planet. But Narada Muni also, he wants to accelerate the appearance of Lord Krishna. He wants Lord Krishna to come as soon as possible. So he's 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 using kamsa. To bring about the appearance of Lord Krishna. Of course, it appears very terrible for the mother and father, Vasudev and Devaki. It's so painful to see the children killed. But they're very, they're very advanced. And remember, they're not ordinary personalities. They're very great devotees. So they can understand that, that this is the plan of the Lord. There must be some reason behind it, and it is all the the will of the Supreme Lord, and they accept it as His plan. The famous verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Yate nukampam sushamikshamana bunjana evatma kritam vipakam rigvagvapu vir vibhadan namaste devjiveta yamukti pade sadayabak. That a devotee will tolerate all the difficulties. Accepting them to be reactions due to his past deeds, but go on with devotional service. So the devotees accepting all the difficulties, that's his qualification to become the devotee, to go back to Godhead. That he accepts everything. It's Krishna's plan. So we have to. We are struggling, trying to pre pre preach Krishna consciousness. We don't get much success, but we don't give up. We keep going. Srila Prabhupada used to give an example about the Indian railways. You know, Indian railways, the train always comes very late. So Prabhupada said, motto is, keep the wheels rolling. Even though the train may come very late, it should come. 
don't stop, keep the train going, even if it goes slow. Srila Prabhupada was struggling for many years preaching Krishna consciousness. And it was only just in the last final years of his life he got some success, some results. So similarly, Vasudev and Devaki, the beginning of their marriage, they're struggling, they're put in jail, the children are killed. But later on, it will, the situation will improve. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna. Yes. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Yes. Um, oh. Yeah, I have one question, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Is Mahabharat happen every Dwapar Yuga or it happened when Krishna come only every day of Brahma? Uh, yes, uh, the Mahabharata, the, like this, this uh, killing of demons and so on, this is every yuga every 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 yuga every dwapar yuga yeah but the, the actual past you see krishna comes once in the day of brahma that's only for the giving pleasure to his devotees and for uh, teaching the mood of raga bhakti that's only once in the day of brahma which means 1000 yugas in one day of Brahma, there are 1,000 Chatur Yugas. So once in the day of Brahma, the Lord comes to teach Raga, Raga Bhakti and to encourage the devotees, the path of spontaneous devotion in the mood of the gopis. That's once in the day of Brahma. But in every age, Sambhavami Yuge, Yuge, the Lord comes to kill the demons. The killing of the demons is not done by Krishna, that's done by his Vasudev form. เอ่อโอเคนะคะเพราะฉะนั้นคําถามของโปรเจก็ถามว่าเอ่อคริชนาเนี่ยทรงเอ่ออวตารลงมาทุกๆเอ่อยุคเลยมั้ยหรือว่
so that means uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also come uh, very less, right? Because he only comes after Lord Krishna himself originally comes. Uh huh. Would he also come in every every yoga or only once after Lord Krishna comes? Mm hmm. Yeah, just like Krishna, you see, in every Kali Yuga, the Yuga Dharma is the chanting of the Holy Name. So there's an incarnation who comes to teach the chanting of the Holy Name. In every Kali Yuga. But the particular incarnation in this Kali Yuga comes, he comes as to taste the mood of Radharani. He doesn't just come only to teach the chanting of the Holy Name. That is the external reason. But his internal reason in coming is to experience the pleasure of Radharani in being servant of Krishna. So Krishna comes in the mood of Radha, and when he comes in the mood of Radha, that is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and that only happens once in a day of Brahma. ก็คือเอ่อความหมายนะคะความจริงเนี่ยเอ่อที่พระองค์ทรงแสดงลงมาก็คือเพื่อที่จะสอนเอ่อเกี่ยวกับมหามเนี่ยให้กับคนแต่
นะคะ uh, so for his uh, she have many people ask her that if we b u s h a uh, mother Saraswati then we will get good knowledge if we b u s h uh, if we worship uh, mother Lakshmi then we will get uh, good money so uh, what will we get by b u s h a uh, by worship Lord Krishna how how should she answer that Well, we should explain to them that Lord Lord Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, and all of these demigods and demigodesses—they are all the servants of Lord Krishna. And if you please Lord Krishna, then you get the blessings of all the demigods and all the demigodesses. <laughs> ให้ได้ก็คือสามารถบอกได้ว่าคริสนาเนี่ยทรงเป็นบุคลิกภาพสูงสุดแห่งพระเจ้าเพราะฉะนั้นเทวดาทุกองค์นะคะก็คือเป็นผู้รับใช้ของพระเจ้าสูงสุดถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยสามารถทําให้องค์พระควานทรงพึงพอพระทัยได้เราเทวดาทุกคนนะคะก็จะพึงพอพระทัยกับเราแล้วก็จะให้พรเรา People are worshiping sometimes Lakshmi or sometimes Saraswati There are many demigods. There are 33 crore demigods, but if you worship Lord Krishna, you can get the blessings of all of these demigods because they're all very pleased when you worship the Supreme Lord. จะทำให้เทวดาทั้ง33ล้านองค์เนี่ยค่ะพึงพอใจแล้วก็จะให้พรอันพิเศษกับเรา Lord Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita that people who worship these demigods they're not very intelligent because the results of their worship is very limited and temporary พระชนาได้อธิบายในพระวัตคิตานะคะบอกว่าบุคคลที่บูชาเหล่าเทวดาเนี่ยถือว่าเป็นบุคคลที่ไม่ค่อยฉลาดเพราะว่าผลที่เขาจะได้รับนะคะเป็นผลที่มีจำกัด And by worshiping demigod, then you may go to the planet of the demigod, which is in the material world. But if you worship Krishna, you can go to his abode, and you never take birth again. So the worship of the demigods is not encouraged in the Bhagavad Gita. But if you worship Lord Krishna, you can get the greatest benefit. And Lord Krishna is easy to worship. You can offer him a leaf, a flower, a fruit, water. And especially if you chant his holy name, then it's very pleasing. Of all the all the gods, Vishnu is very the most powerful. Brahma creates, Shiva destroys, Vishnu maintains. The maintenance is the most difficult thing. Creation, you can do it. Not so, so difficult. Destroy, okay, not difficult. But to maintain, to keep something going, that's more difficult. Because in the way that we are 
สร้างบางสิ่งบางอย่างใช่ไหมคะไม่ยากขนาดนั้นในการทำลายบางสิ่งบางอย่างไม่ยากแต่ so worship ดูแลรักษาบางสิ่งบางอย่างไว้ so worship of Vishnu is very powerful and people worship Vishnu they chant the names of Vishnu there are one thousand names of Vishnu But the one thousand names of Vishnu is equal to one time chanting the name of Lord Rama. And three names of Lord, Lord Rama is equal to one name of Lord Krishna. So you we should chant the name of Lord Krishna. So in this way, you can to convince all these worshippers of the demigods. That they should come to worship the Supreme Lord. So in the Vedas, they encourage people in the worship of demigods because they are encouraging people in the material life. But then you can understand the results of the worship is very temporary. The money you may get money. You worship likes me. You get money, but you're going to get old. You're going to get disease. We're going to die. You cannot, you cannot take your money with you. So the intelligent people will want to understand how to get eternal benefit. Okay. Thank you very much. Nice question. Okay. So we will stop here. Very clear. <laughs> clear. Okay. Thank you very much, Guru Dev. Okay. Thank you, Archana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Thank you very Hare much. Hare Krishna. Chop. Thank you, everybody. Chop D. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krish